A listener recently asked me about agile development. So when I heard about the author of a book focused on that, who even runs a community, I knew we had to talk more. Douglas Squirrel, who goes by Squirrel, joins me on this bonus episode of The Business of Tech. Well, Squirrel, thanks for joining me today. Fantastic. Glad to be here, Dave. You had a book that I almost needed to immediately jump to because you thought a lot about using agile and agile development methodologies as it applies to consulting, which is something that I've recently talked about on the show. Tell me your perspective on how agile applies for delivering consulting services. So in, in delivery of almost anything, it's much better if you can have iterations that allow you to learn about your client. I don't know, uh, plastic parts. It's true if you're building um, spaceships and you're trying to get to Mars. Um, it's true if you uh, want to help small businesses uh, be more successful with their IT. The, the ridiculous thing that so many consultants fall into is the idea that um, you're going to take a statement of work from somebody, it's going to list a bunch of different things you should do, and your job is to do that as closely as possible to what they asked for. Um, that's a total disaster in software. It's a total disaster in most things. Um, so uh, the trick is to not do what your client wants, but instead to do what they need. Okay. Now, this, I'm, I'm hearing my listeners scream at the same time because they're so used, the, the methodology they've normally used, they go to the customer, they talk about what they're going to do, they put forth their very well done proposal, and it's a list of stuff, and you're saying that's all wrong. Uh, so yes. how do you do that magic? <laughs> yes. So the, the trick is that you build trust with them first. And that's uh, a lot of the book is about having conversations with people. It's aimed at, uh, at any type of business, any type of organization that's using software. Uh, and, and the uh, idea is to have conversations that build trust, for example, to start with. And if your client trusts you as, you notice how I introduced myself when we got started. I said, I'm an expert in making tech teams insanely profitable. Now, when I start that way, people ask, how on earth do you do that? What do you do? How does, how does that work? And I build trust with them by giving them examples, by showing them what I can do for their business. And I help them to understand how working with me will be uh, not just a, 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 a path to making your tech team do more of what they do today, but a way to much better profit, uh, maybe a totally different product line, uh, a revolution in what you're doing. And if I can do that, and I typically do that in a, in a half hour introductory call, then I can charge a lot more and I can help them to be tremendously more successful than what they might have started with, which often for me is something like, uh, would, you, would you coach this one person who, who doesn't seem to know how to lead a tech team? And I'll say, well, actually, I can do a lot more than that. For your listeners, they should be able to say, look, you've asked me to maintain the printers, you've asked me to upgrade to Windows 11, you've asked me to do these seven things. Why are you asking for that? What's the reason for that? What, what benefit will that be to your business? And they might say something like, uh, well, um, uh, what we actually have is uh, real trouble in the call center. Um, the, the machines never start up right. There's some um, uh, viruses and malware that our, our customers send to us. And, um, you know, we, uh, we're very worried about ransomware and phishing. And you suddenly say, hey, would you like some services that have to do with security and training and improving this part of your business beyond I show up and install a bunch of stuff? That's an agile approach. That's one that's going to lead to iteration and learning. And you can do that and you're going to discover more things. Now, how does this work in the implementation? Because it seems like, you, again, you, you almost are implying that normal methodology, right? Well, I go in there, I find some more stuff, I expand my engagement, but then I make a list of the things I'm going to go do and go forth and do it. No, 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 what not the things you're going to do. No, 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 that's the difference. Okay. So what you do is you make a list of the things, the problems that they have. So you notice my, I, I described problems in the business. I didn't describe a technical problem or a solution, right? I didn't say we're going to install um, the, this or that Defender um, a piece of software uh, or upgrade to this version of Windows. I said, man, our customer service people can't answer calls because their computers are always down. That's a business problem. And if I can identify that kind of problem, then I can come up with a solution. We'll turn into things that my team or me might may actually show up and do. But... I'm going to talk about those and charge for them as 
uh, business outcomes. Right. I'm going to talk about what's that business outcome that you're going to get and what value is that? Well, man, you know, if we could take 50% more calls, we could make 50% more sales. Start adding up, you got a lot of zeros. Now, are you re- recommending people write proposals that don't include what they're doing and, mo- and just say at the end of this paid engagement, you will deliver 50% more calls? How do, how do you write well, proposals in this methodology? What a great question. So um, I'll tell you how I write mine. So I, I just wrote one this morning. So uh, uh, that proposal has uh, information about the business outcomes that we should expect and what the value is to them. So I worked with the, the CEO to define if I intervene with their tech team, what difference can I make to the bottom line? And it means uh, certain projects um, get to milestone payments, which are have a lot of zeros on them. Uh, that they can raise more money. They're a startup, so they're, they're, they're raising more from venture capitalists, and we were able to quantify that. Now, what I didn't say is I will guarantee that you will reach every one of these goals and um, that I will make sure that every one of them happens because a lot of it I don't control, right? The investment landscape might change. An- another bank might fail, and suddenly capitalists don't have any more money, right? So that, that I don't control. But I do know what I can do that will contribute to that, and so I make sure that I say, look, if this is the overall value way up here, Let's cut that in half. Let's say I can make 10% of that happen, and then let's say my fee is 10% of that. I still get a number with plenty of zeros, and I'll charge you that. You'll get these results that move you in this direction, and I'll contribute. A lot of it's going to be your people, and in the, the, um, uh, but, but I'm going to catalyze that. I think of myself as a catalyst. So you add me, and you get more results. That's how your listeners should think of themselves. So in the call center example, you might say, well, look, you need more people to answer more calls, and you need um, their good training so that they can upsell when they're doing it. I'm not going to do that for you, but I can make sure their computers are on, and I can make sure that they're defended against the malware that, uh, that uh, users inadvertently send them to them, and I can make sure that they're trained well in how to use the um, uh, the call center software. And how much would that contribute? Well, gosh, if we could do that, we might get 10% of the 50% uplift. And you say, great, how much is that worth to you? Suddenly, you're having a very different kind of conversation. Of course, that's the one that us engineers, we never got trained how to do. So that's what I help a lot of people with. Gotcha. Now, does that extend out through the way the services are delivered to? How do you stay agile through, you know, that you get the customer to agree, but we know things change a lot when you get in there. How do you continue to navigate that while you're engaged with the customer? Absolutely. Well, it means that your delivery now is going to be about business outcomes, and that means you can be less certain about what's going to happen. So let's suppose you're a small MSP, you have maybe five people with you, um, you send one of them on site and say, great, we've agreed on what the outcome's going to be, we're going to fix this call center, we're going to get all the security tools in and do some training so they, they know how to deal with it. And the person shows up and the person says, well, actually, the major problem is the network sucks around here. I can't believe they've got the oldest switches you've ever seen. And uh, the reason their computers are down is not, they think it's malware, but it's not. It's actually just their own computers can't talk to each other. And you say, hey, CEO, we've discovered there's a different problem and we're going to get to the same outcome. You don't charge them more. This is why I always charge a flat fee. I say, look, and it's a high fee. Uh, We're going to get to the source of this problem. But we've done an iteration here, just like in agile software development. You do an iteration. You, you try something. You see what the result is. Malware's not going to sip, malware defense is not going to fix your problem. What we need to do here is fix your network. Here's what's going to be involved with that. I'm going to send somebody else to go over there and do that. Now, you notice in that story I told, the person who shows up has to be aware of this. right? You can't have folks who are... Uh, straight out of university, no training, no understanding of business, um, who, who turn up uh, with a, a work order and just do whatever's on the page. Um, and whatever their age, whatever their experience, they need to be the sort of people whose brains are switched on. You can't have zombies here. So whether it's you or whether it's somebody in your team, you need people who turn up and say, uh, we're trying to solve this problem. The customer told us about that problem. Here's what's on the work order. I, I better do this other thing. And they go and do that. And that requires, of course, a lot of trust in them. But you're doing this in kind of a fixed fee approach, right? How do you offset the dangers of that? Because this can spiral and changes all different kinds of ways. How do you offset that danger? Uh, two, two ways. First, build trust with the client. So clearly, if you show up and there's a massive difference between what you planned, which was a day of training, and what's needed, which is a complete overhaul of the network, 
if you have high trust with the client, you can come back and say, hey, isn't it good that we discovered you? We're not going to waste time training people on uh, computers that don't even work. We're going to get the network sorted. Be different. Let's negotiate that. If you have high trust with them, that's a, a, a no-op conversation, conversation that, that you don't have to worry about very much. Um, and, and so you do come back on that. But uh, I also just charge a high fee to start. So in, in my situation where I'm coaching people, I may discover there's somebody else who needs a, a, a refresher or needs a little help. I'm not going to undertake a whole new coaching engagement with that person, but I sure am going to pick up the phone to them and say, you know, we can unlock this if you do this. I make sure I charge enough that that's a, a, a no-brainer for me. Gotcha. So that so the way you're offsetting that is is essentially you've got enough padding because of because of high rates that you can you can absorb some some real flexibility. Because now, I'm delivering well, value. Wanna... Because the the client says, hey, look, I'm, my call center is going to be running smoother. My tech team will be able to deliver new features uh, much faster. I don't care how Squirrel does it. I just know that I'm going to get a ton of value from that. Now. Can this go all the way down? You know, a single person, you know, a single person practice maybe saying, well, you know, these like even implementing agile methodology, that's more than I that's more structure than I need. I'm just managing me. Do you think it sca it scales all the way down to this to the smallest org? Absolutely. I didn't say anything about scrum or sprints or any of the kind of um, trappings and skeletons of agile development. I told you about a philosophy. Uh, you're looking at my team. This is the whole of Squirrel Squared. This is me. My, my wife owns half the business, but she just tells me to uh, earn more, right? That's, that's her, her job is to uh, help me raise the prices. Uh, I do everything. And you can do the same uh, in, in your business if you're a solo, um, it, because there's nothing I describe that you can't do. So it's it isn't about necessarily the the methodology and the DevOps versus Agile. Like it's it, it is so. Where should people be thinking about applying Agile in these smaller, lightweight project management style engagements? Uh, it, it, it's with a small A. It's you're looking for agility, not the the fancy thing that somebody uses to to manage 500 engineers and keep them all moving the same direction. That you're right. You don't need anything like that. But the, those aren't the important parts of Agile. Agile started not with a capital A and certifications and a, a whole set of rituals. It started as a bunch of people in a cabin in Utah, if I remember correctly, who signed a manifesto that said, maybe it would be a good idea if we talked to some customers and if we didn't make a plan that showed everything we're going to do for the next year, but we actually listened to those customers and built what they needed. And that's the philosophy that any of us could adopt. And sadly, especially in IT managed services, too many people don't. They just say, all right, I'm just going to take the what I'm given, deliver it, and uh, I hope that doesn't work out very well. So, Squirrel, if people are interested in learning more, what, what are the resources you've got available to help them get started? Well, the best place to go is squirrelsquadron.com, and that's my community of tech and non-tech people working together. What a crazy idea. There's lots of tech communities. You know, you can join Microsoft's uh, communities and and, and uh Java communities and you name it, but there's not much that's but non-tech people talking to technical people. So there's lots of opportunities to practice this, to learn more about what people need, to ask me questions. Uh, this is all free. They uh, uh, run an event every week. There's um, uh, videos going back uh, quite a long way. Um, there's a podcast I do. There's tons of material there and it's all free. Um, and uh, to get in touch with me personally, uh, there's DouglasSquirrel.com, and that's where you can get my consulting services to help you with your team if that's what you want to do. But the Squirrel Squadron's always free. Awesome. Well, Squirrel, thanks for joining me today and talking about all this. Fantastic. Excellent to, to talk, Dave. I really appreciate it. Fun questions. Thanks for your time and attention. Time is a finite resource, and I really value you giving me some of yours. If you like this video, you can let me know with a like of the video, and even more valuable, hitting the subscription button. My content is all free, and I use metrics like subscriptions to pay the bills, so it has real value. The content here is produced under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you're interested in more content like this, you can get access to content early via our Patreon at patreon.com slash MSP radio. It's our give what you want model where you set the value of what you think the content is worth. If you like this podcast, you can catch it daily as the five minute news and commentary show, The Business of Tech. 
Available on all your favorite podcatchers with links at businessof.tech. Just hit that big blue button to subscribe. Again, thank you for taking time out of your day to listen, and I really value the interaction. If you want to say something in the comments, I do respond and watch all that, and I look forward to talking to you next time.